Good evening, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today we're doing Wilderness Travelogue. We are looking at stories of loneliness and isolation. You know, please say with me the words of welcome and worship. We gather together in this Lenten journey through the wilderness of our emotions, our lives, and your world. Both of you are on mute. It, even though we travel through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not fear for you are with us. We believe that neither life nor, nor death, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. We remember the Beatitudes that bless the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others. Oh, would one of you read uh, the uh, Gospel of Matthew? I can. Thank you. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli Lama Sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is call, calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. All right. Last time we read the reflection uh, by David E. Butler and then they read it on the video and it's on the video. So we'll just gonna go straight to there. Well, hello there. Um, I am Cindy Lemke. I'm, I'm here tonight to visit with, uh, uh, to have a discussion uh, for this Lenten toolkit. Uh, I serve the Staples UCC Church in Staples, Minnesota as a licensed pastor and also serve in Wadena, Minnesota as a part-time licensed uh, pastor. Yeah, I'm Pastor N. Olympier. I serve up in Grand Marais, uh, Minnesota at the First Congregational Church, uh, just switched from designated pastor to settled pastor at the annual meeting in January. Congratulations. Anyway, I'll get started. Um, I have a reading tonight from uh, Seasons of Hope written by David E. Butler. I know this lonely and desolate wilderness. I've been there. I've been there because I've built walls around my life to keep others out. I reach out, but it's a fleeting thing. I pull back before anyone can even think of rejecting me, locked within the prison of this well-defended life, this well-fortified self. I know this wilderness where the only sound is my voice protesting the emptiness. The wilderness is me. You know, I think I'll just ask you the first question and we can go back and forth. Uh, I wonder when there was a time when you were lonely or alone. Ah, uh, yeah, um, I have fibromyalgia, so I'm a, a, so it's some some years are better than other years, but for about five years, between 2006 and 2011, um, I was able to work a little bit. I worked half time at a church, and then, but other than that, uh, my pain in body was so much that I just laid on my couch. 
but yeah, most of my evenings were watching TV, trying to uh, keep out the pain or put away aside the pain. And and when I, there are times when I try to reach out and say, hey, you know, you want to come over or you want to do something. And then sometimes I'd have to cancel because I'd have to, I, I was just, my body wasn't up to it. So uh, what about you? Um, I think I, I really resonate with the idea that I, I inflict it upon myself that it's that it's a part of me. Um, I think the loneliest time of my life, and, and I wasn't alone, uh, was shortly after my parents died. They died within about six months of each other. And after they passed, um, there was just a lot of adjustment. I kind of closed into myself and I would feel lonely and not like that feeling, but yet wasn't necessarily doing anything to change that. Where did you feel that? Did you feel that in your body in this particular area? I think there was just an emptiness within, just over, kind of overwhelming, but I don't know that I could define it to a specific area, physical area of my body. It just was there. With fibromyalgia, it had pain that moved all throughout the body. I actually was, you know, trying to avoid any type of physical pain. So I was kind of doing my best to ignore my body. That brings its own type of pain that, you know, I, I, there'd be days where I'd say I hate my body because of, of the pain or because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. On my road and my path back to healing, it was, I'm, you know, I had to come to, I love my body. I just wish it wouldn't hurt so much. I wish it would, it would be able to do the things it wanted to do. Did you ask for help? I mean, how did, did you reach out at all? Sometimes a lot of indirect. I, I'm from North Dakota, upper Midwest. I would say, you know, especially men, we don't ask for help. And so a lot of it was indirect stuff that people didn't pick up on because it was so subtle. When I moved to, uh, uh, into South Dakota, a little town called Ipswich, I moved into an apartment building and I had uh, two new neighbors who would knock on my door and say, dinner's ready, get over here. You know, they get into that, you know. I mean, I just wanted to lay on my couch and just, you know, not moving, but they're like, get up, get moving. We got for supper ready, get over here and eat it. And they were around for about a year. Yeah, they were my neighbors for about a year. And I, I was like, I hope they don't call, you know, I, I, so I was like, I hope they don't knock on my door because I just want to lay here because it did hurt to get up and move, but I did. But being sitting and having a meal prepared was actually something pretty sweet as well. So I didn't have to ask for their help. They just kind of uh, moved in on me and saw that I needed help and took over. And that was pretty, pretty special, pretty wonderful. Yeah. You know, if, if I think about if I asked for help, I wasn't even at, at the point where it was the worst. I wasn't even talking about the pain. I don't think I was directly asking for help. I think it was you know, really a long time later before I, I um, dealt with a lot of the, the grieving process, um, yeah. more healthily dealing with it. Yeah, it was just, it was just this lonely feeling and I could be alone in a whole room of people. I mean, it wasn't even that we, you know, the kids were at home yet. Um, they were still in school and, you know, my husband was here, um, but I could sit in the living room and, and be uh, alone not alone, lonely. I suppose, you know, I, I, I did it, you know, eventually I, I would talk to people about it or somebody would say something that struck a, a nerve and I, you know, uh, uh, oh, oh, so that's, that's what I'm doing kind of thing. And, and those things helped, you know, eventually I, I did seek some help, you know, through some pastors uh, that I had at the time and, and also a little bit of counseling and, you know, worked through it and, I, you know, just in a much better place now, several years later, but, um, but remembering some of those things so that if loneliness returns, I just know that I, I got to keep moving forward, trying to participate in life without shutting, without shutting myself in. Where do you think God is in this? You know, where, uh, what do you think God wants us to do or, or where God is when we're feeling lonely? My theology and my heart says that God is with us always and we're never alone, but there were times when... I screamed at God, where are you? And, and why am I feeling this way? And what's going on? And, and, and there are times when I gave in or I had weeks and months of despair of like, is this what my, the rest of my life is going to be like? And is it worth it? 
but I had, but I never fully gave into it. I always had hope, hope that I'd find some healing, hope that I'd find the right friends, hope that I'd become in a better situation. Um, you know, uh, and that, that was the biggest thing for me. It wasn't God's presence. It wasn't feeling God's care or love. It was believing in God enough to know that there is hope for a better future. future. Mm -hmm. My theology stating for me that yes, God is present and, and I can reach out to God. There's the knowing that and then the living it is a growing edge. It certainly was, you know, back when, when I was feeling the grief the most acutely and it continues to be now. In a lot of ways, it was such a process and some of what I remember the most was people who were probably, as I think about it now, were actually that that sort of face of Christ where they would say something and you would feel it. Yeah. And the humility of that would would kind of, I don't know, it would it would bring you out of the loneliness a little bit. But over time I, I did discover um not only did those conversations as I remembered them, um, not only did they strike me in the moment, but but they helped in the future. Thank you, Cindy, for uh, talking with me. And uh, yep, thank you. Thanks, Sherry, for inviting us. And we hope that some of what we said uh, has some resonation. And um, and we apologize if you're not hearing the answers you need to hear to help you out and just encourage you to be it, uh, to reach out to your church, to reach out to the ministers, to reach out to professional care people, um, counselors or therapists as you need to help you get through if you're going through a tough time right now. And let's say, uh, let's close with prayer. Mighty and merciful God, we love to think that uh, your yoke is easy and your burdens light and it's all joy and peace and happiness and abundant life. But when we read through the Bible and hear the stories, there is always periods of loneliness, of darkness, of despair. And in, as in the story of Job, we don't always get the answers we want or even we need. But help us to hang on to some hope. Help us to see you in the sunrise or sunset or in the still moments. Just help us have that hope that where we are at right now, if we're in those moments, in those times, that they will not last. And this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Actually, we're gonna go and listen to a song. Uh, so I'll bring that up.
And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. I gather up his face to you this day and grant you peace. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna stop sharing and, or stop the recording. And uh, we may have a conversation afterwards, but we won't record it for the rest of you to hear. So blessings everybody.